I moved to Mexico, giving you a sneak peek into the lives of Americans and Canadians who live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Hi, thank you for joining. I'm Diani Leal, and this series is brought to you by Diani Might Lifestyle and Real Estate, based out of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We are here today with Javier and Diana mm -hmm. Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. Javier is originally from Mexico, and Diana from Canada, mm -hmm. from Calgary, Alberta, like many of our other guests. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Can you guys take us back to the beginning? You know, where are you both from originally? How did you meet, and how did you wind up here in Puerto Vallarta? Mm -hmm. Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am originally from Calgary, Alberta, but we did not meet there. Uh, we met in Victoria. I went to university to study voice music, and um, Javier was at the conservatory. We met doing opera together, and then um, yeah, we sang together for years, and eventually fell in love. And then we came to Mexico when we were at a crossroads in life, where we had just been traveling around in our fifth wheel through the states and canada for a few months um, he had taken some parental leave i had been working from home so we had the freedom to do that before that he had been working a lot and was away i was yeah i was working for um a large industry in canada and uh, i was traveling just mm -hmm. a lot like every week and i was really missing my my family like my my kiddos my lovely wife and uh decided that money was good but that was not life mm -hmm. so i decided to take a one-year vacation i called my the president of the company and uh he was a good sport he's like a what <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it like a one-year vacation it was like so when you're done you're gonna come back <laughs> and I was like, yeah, when I'm done, I'll come back, but I, I need a vacation with my family. <laughs> for a year. <laughs> for a year. Because my, my, with my first son, I, I missed a lot of the beginning mm -hmm. with Saul. And uh, I was decided not to do that with Tristan for second son. So um, uh, we sold everything we, we had. Mm -hmm. We got a truck, a big truck, a big trailer, fifth wheel, and we hit the road with no plan. Just mm -hmm. one year. Wow. Doesn't matter what it was. Like we went to the court, uh, an intersection. We're like, that looks ugly. That looks better. <laughs> that way. Found the closest <laughs> campground. And yeah. Stayed. And it was it was a blast with the kids mm -hmm. um, to do that. We visited a few places that we wanted. To How do. old were they at this point? Well, Tristan was Tristan still. Was just born. Yeah, he was a baby. That's why we had some parental leave to use up. And then Saul was uh, about four, three and a half or so. And what had you been doing at this point? So I actually was working with doTERRA as an essential oil educator, and I had made enough of an income for us at home to have some freedom for our lifestyle, along with the support from his income. And so, um, yeah, we just took the flexibility and, and ran with it. <laughs> Sometimes you only get those windows every once in a while. And yeah, yeah no, we you gotta, took it. Yeah, you got to grab it, we right? It. Yeah. And then we came back to, you know, Canada and we're like, okay, what are we doing? We should buy the house. We should do, you know, what, what's fit in the box. We just didn't feel right and we couldn't fit in the box. We thought we would retire in Mexico, but then Habs one day was like, I want, he's wanted to do coffee for years, like his whole life. He's had this desire along with singing. He loved coffee. He's like, why don't we move to Mexico and I give this coffee thing a go and we can live off of your income and we'll make this work. And I was like, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw like the, I saw the, the laws in Canada of like starting a business. And I was like, okay, so you have to be a successful millionaire to start a business. There's a Canada. lot of red tape in the <laughs> States yep. too. It's, it's really daunting. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So I, I was like, you know what? Good old Mexico. <laughs> you're like, if I you're, know Mexico well. Yeah, it's like if you're willing to try it, you can make it. It's like just, just give it, give it a roll, you know. And uh, I study lots, came over here and started. And Javier, you're originally from Mexico. I am originally from a little town called Santiago, Nuevo León, a magic town in Mexico. Nobody knows what it is or where it is. So I just <laughs> say that I'm from Monterrey, Mexico. I see. Some people might go, Ah, yeah, Monterrey. 
that's a small <laughs> town, common small town issue, I think, for you know everybody. Just pick the closest city, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, people just like stare at you, you know. Yeah, and actually, that brings me to when we first came to Mexico, uh, we wanted. Um, the kids to have a, a relation with the grandparents. Mm -hmm. So we started in Monterrey. Granted, I was in Victoria, BC when I graduated from, from engineering in, in Mexico. I went to Victoria to study opera in the Conservatory of Music. And I was in Canada for 24 years, 20, 23 years, mm -hmm. somewhere out there. Oh, wow. And uh, so when I came back to the city, it was definitely not the city that I left. But did not like it. How had it changed? Well, it went from being like a million and a half city to close to seven million Whoa. in that period. Um, it has like the traffic was horrible. Um, the people were just cranky. <laughs> um, it was just not what it was. Uh, so a bit disappointed. Um, and you guys went there together. Yeah. yeah, that we was married. your first because you said you've been in Mexico for six, six years, years. Yeah. and the first two years you were there. Yeah, I guess it. Well, maybe I should say five and a half, about a year and a half over there, and then now we've been here for four years. Four yeah. years, okay. But so we, you were like, where next? Like, this isn't real, really what we were hoping for when we thought about moving to Mexico. We also had some air quality issues, and so yeah. being by the ocean sounded very <laughs> uh, enticing. So yeah, we just searched for what options we could figure out, and he had a connection with coffee that made it possible to for us to kind of take a leap and know that we had a couple income streams available. Later. So let me see, see if I'm following this. You said you were going to be back in a year. Did you go back in a year? I, I did go back to. I did go back to. Because you're like he didn't I, believe me, and I'm like yeah. maybe with good reason. No, I, I did go back to Canada. My boss, uh, uh, Keith Turner, he he was great. He's a great guy. And uh, uh, he welcomed me at, back at the company, and uh, he offered me a, a, a great position, like a, 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 a management for the branch of the company. Um, and uh, but already having tasted being a father and given everything you have to your child, I knew. I knew I belong on the side of my kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you felt like ultimately being here with them, like raising them in Mexico is a better option. Yeah. I'm, for I'm, you and for So them. far. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there were a few things for us. I mean, one was financially, it was more feasible for us. Yep. Number two is that the culture here is so into family. And so, you know, in Canada, sometimes I'd go into a restaurant and I'd feel really uncomfortable having my kids there and thinking we shouldn't have come and this was a bad idea. Everybody's <laughs> looking at us. Yeah. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. Whereas yeah. when I come here, there's just so much that is made for families that that it's expected to have kids running around or there's a special area for them or just, Yeah, there's it, a lot those ludotecas are great. Yeah, huh? yeah, exactly. So <laughs> So, I mean, we, we knew we wanted to have the connection with family. We wanted to help them with the language. You know, they, we do have, uh, you know, the two cultures coming together in our family. We wanted to honor that. And, and so it just seemed like a great, a great time. And it was right before they started school officially. So it was like, if we'd make the change, we should do it now and just kind of get things rolling. Yeah. And so how do you feel so far about that decision, you know, kind of looking back? I don't know if you've ever, ever thought about like where I know you you can't you never know for sure the sliding glass door thing like where would you be had you have stayed you know but do you, you ever know, think about it oh yeah no regrets yeah like it's been going so well for us over here um, my my business has grown mm -hmm. a lot I even had to say no to a few a few opportunities wow because um, I felt I wasn't uh, ready. Um, and uh and so i i've been i i don't want to grow my business just out of proportion and make that mistake that i i, I believe our companies or business do i will never risk quality so i'm like taking it slowly that's yeah i think it, yeah. and it takes kind of a lot of discipline no and self-control to do that because you're when yeah. you're an entrepreneur you really 
want the opportunity. And when people bite, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, yes, you know, response, response, roll with it, roll with it, roll with it. And to sit, st take a step back and say, like, I can't compromise the integrity of the quality of service and product that I'm offering in whatever way sometimes mm -hmm. takes a, a great deal of, you know, foresight and, and self-control. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's you know, uh, that's that's very respectful. Yeah, and I've been blessed with, like, great great clients they're they're like supporting me to grow even more and, yeah and, uh, it's a great relationship i have with my clients wow so can, can you tell us a little bit more about sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you what were you gonna say i was just gonna say and for me it was um very eye-opening moving here like it was a big shift like there's a lot of of differences maybe in lifestyle expectations in noise levels <laughs> and, you know in the food and just adjusting right like there's just like a cultural difference so there did, there was some acclimatization for me as well um, but it was all with like a lot of joy and love in my heart and just being open to the experience and, and being able to go with the flow of things and recognize you can let go of some of these ideas of how it's supposed to, you know, if a house construction or paint is supposed to be perfect in Canada, maybe there's a few drips over here and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what I loved about it is that we could live life outside of the box. We took a huge leap coming. All of our friends were like, wow, I'm so envious of you. I can't believe you could do that. It's like, you could too. It just takes a lot of courage to be like, we're jumping blind. We don't know what it's going to be, but we know we'll figure it out. Yeah. It's a huge risk. I mean, because your comfort, you're leaving your comfort zone. Yeah. And for me, it was also language. Like I, I didn't know very much Spanish and, um, and I will say, like, you know, the doTERRA, the essential oils business that brought us and gave us the flexibility to be here, I found it challenging culture-wise to continue growing it in the same way with the language barrier, with just sort of different ways that people like to do business. And so, you know, there were some adjustments with that, too. And so it was just, we just figured it out, though. You just go with the... <laughs> yeah. So that's a remote, uh, you're working remotely. Yes. And um, admittedly, like, I kind of have we've shifted back into some singing as well so i do still support people with the oils more so in canada but of course as it comes up here i'm always happy to help but it's not like my main focus as it was when we first started yeah, yeah. we're going back to singing yeah so we... yeah i feel like we haven't even really you know introduced <laughs> that so and there's a lot of things and i and I, I do think that this is also the um the essence of, you know, living abroad sometimes mm -hmm. and, you know, and being self-employed and, you know, an entrepreneur and, and, and doing, you know, and you just, you wind up having very many trades and things that you do and they all kind of come together in this interesting way. So mm -hmm. let me see if I get this straight. You run your, when you're talking about your business, you're talking about singing or your coffee business. Ah, uh, oh, I okay. Mean, uh... Um, my coffee, my coffee, I was talking about my coffee business. Okay, you so were. Far. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was getting that yep. straight. Okay, so coffee, you guys are both professional opera singers, mm -hmm. yes. which that was our, our, you know, very exciting reveal <laughs> because I think that's an amazing, you know, skill and, and, and job and everything that you, that you do. And I saw your videos and you're very talented. Thank I you. loved them. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's great. It's an amazing way to come together. You know, that both of you have the uh, ability to do that together. I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, and you are working remotely, uh, in the essential oil business, which is you've been doing since before you even arrived in Mexico. And that's yeah. been, it's a kind of a reliable source of income mm -hmm. for you guys as you explore the other ways where you can, you know, be self-reliant. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So I've been doing the essential oils and I've also added on a glutathione product with new me that helped me with health because I had a big digestive crazy health issue that wasn't being resolved with um, a variety of <laughs> doctors Normal, yeah. And, and, yeah and and I mean of course using my natural solutions but when it wasn't clear what the problem was you know you can only get so far but finally got clarity I had SIBO got got it fixed but have also discovered other supplements and things that have supported me on that journey so yeah. helping people with health however I can I do that when yeah it comes up. And then, yes, we went back to singing. So we had been taking, we took 10 years off to really And that's how you guys met. Family. Yeah. Singing. Yeah. And now, all started. about a year ago, we <laughs> you're just... singing, serenading each other. Like, <laughs> I like you. You know, when you're, when you're a, a performer, a theater performer, or it's like musical theater or opera, um, there, it's a lot of work. Like, you have to do a lot of, like, uh, desk work, mm -hmm. um, a lot of practice, um, auditions, um, 
and then go through rehearsals if you're so lucky to get something and then performing but it, and take care of yourself because like, people are paying good money to see you right so yeah. you want to offer them the best of you mm -hmm. and the performance uh, art is yeah yeah and, and, a lot and, of pressure <laughs> so we we waited this long because it takes a lot of time and we have two kids and they're our primary um, responsibility mm -hmm. so we we didn't want to have like being raised by a nanny or something like that. So we, we decided to pause our careers. And, uh, and we both said, at some point, we'll go back to it. We don't know how, when, or where. We ended up living here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of a sudden is, we just started not too long a ago. A year ago. We, I went to my neighbor's house, and she's an amazing wedding photographer, like the top of the top. She's incredible. Her name is Eva Sika. She's a beautiful Eva Sika. I think I've seen her stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she's got just an incredible heart and she's, she lives close to us. And so we went to their place. We were having a fire chatting and she had, we were just realizing we were neighbors learning about us, learned we were singers and asked, do you want to sing again? And we were like, well, yeah, that'd be fun. So she got us connected with an amazing manager in Nayarta Entertainment. And we've um, just been kind of getting ourselves connected into the scene with different theaters and wedding people and stuff. And, um, started singing again and just took the opportunity. And she was so kind to help us with our demo video and um, really just thanks to her breathing a bit of life back into our passion, we, we decided you to react. Switch. And was it like you, was it like riding a bike or like, was it, were you guys a little rusty? A little rusty. Or were you <laughs> like, or were you just like, you just jumped right back in? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. Like it, it You're like, let me work. oil the, we, the yeah, vocal we had to, cords You know, here. we practiced a little bit. We did jump in, and, and I mean, it Sometimes went well. Sometimes we see each other in rehearsal, and we're like, oh. that used to sound better than that. <laughs> You're not <laughs> as good as you used to. We did a little work on that. Yeah, so I mean, it took a bit of practice, a little bit out. of, yeah, but, but we, I think we've gotten ourselves back on the saddle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the singing, is this a passion project, or do you have a vision to kind of, you know, um, turn it into something more and what kind of services you sing at events, right? That's where the wedding yeah. photographer and you guys uh, kind of connected because she mm -hmm. was involved in some wedding planning and then said, Hey, you want to sing at this wedding? And yeah. It's, yeah. it's again, it's, it's, um, that we were fortunate enough that we were doing something right. Cause wherever we go or something where they, they, they like us. And, and it we, is, a, it is an income for us. It is, it is an income. Okay. It, it has become an important income. Mm -hmm. Oh, In okay, that's year. great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, but again, we we need to manage it because our we, kids are first. Our kids are first. <laughs> and and I, I think that's a, that's a, an interesting thing that you guys said. And you know, as a fellow parent, it really resonates with me because uh, you know your your kids they just you can put things off and and then you're like they grow up so fast I mean, if there's anything that makes you re feel a sense of urgency it's mm -hmm. you know if i'm going to raise my kids this is how we're raising them already we're mm -hmm. not going to say oh let me do this and that and then we'll raise them in this way you know you just have to drop everything and raise them the way you're going to raise them because they're getting older by the day you know and yeah. one thing i think we picked a good time because what i love right now is that our house is more filled with music and so they're exposed to that more and we hear them singing more and they and we hear we see them they being proud that. of us and they like they're they're proud of us following our dreams now too. And so it's, I feel like it's a good age. They're seven and 10 that they're picking up on, you know, mom and dad have a life too, and they have dreams and this is, you know, you can live your dreams yeah. and, and do what you love and support your family. And of course you, you lead know. by example, right? Yeah. I mean, you can, you, you know, kids, kids are very receptive to that. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, we've been doing some theater shows and we've been doing singing at weddings and ceremonies and, um, occasional surprise flash mobs for events, just bursting out into opera <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, it's been really fun. And then um, Javier, your coffee business, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I started a small roasting uh, company, uh, but I, I, I studied a lot uh, roasting before. And um, and about the, co the the coffee, best coffee in the world comes from a region called the, in Ethiopia, Africa. Uh, it's a balanced cup. We, we can equalize that here in Mexico if you know what you're doing. Like you have to grab some coffee from different regions of Mexico with different characteristics, roast them differently, each of them, study them, 
and then put it in a cup and balance it. So you've perfected it's, this blend? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I need to try this. <laughs> How? <laughs> what people, is it? Because I feel what? like I'm, I struggle. My husband and I actually have struggled to find really good coffee. And we found some guys selling it on the street in Bucerias once. And it was, it was good. But the, the stores, it's not really what we're looking for. And, you know, we buy the whole beans. We grind yeah. them. And, um, but it's, we're not, you know, he's very picky about his coffee and he's not impressed. And, 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 you know, so yeah, I want to add in, I want to add in that also has is really, um, amazing at making sure that all of the different plantations are doing a fair trade, that they know about how the system works because they've been taken advantage of by a lot of different people. And so when he comes and approaches them and works with them, he's like, hey, this is where things should be. This is how this should work. Wow. Kind of a, yeah. So you're holding them accountable and, uh, and, and I helping show them, them how yeah. to be ready. Like, and it's setting, ex like, it's um, communicating the expectations yeah. that people have. And how, yeah. to and how the market works. Themselves, how yeah. to be business people, how to um, be ready for a contingency plan. Like, mm -hmm. all of that, I mean, these people did not know or didn't have plans for that. And yeah, of course, because, I mean, if, how would they know if they haven't been exposed to that, if they mm -hmm. haven't, you know, you know it's, yeah. yeah. So like there's a like a social movement kind yeah. of going on here. It social is. Social responsibility, but then also educating, um, you know, the business education component. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's very empowering. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's a really important aspect, I think, to, you know, entrepreneurial, you know, endeavors in general, you know, just mm -hmm. that, that sense of responsibility for... Yeah. Um, you know, uh, just holding yourself to high standards and the people that you work with as well. Yeah, and my and what I do in my coffee, a lot of people have tried my coffee. I don't, I, I don't have, or I used to have uh, a brand, um, but I found out that to, for me to sell my own brand with having little kids, it was tricky. It's a lot of work, so I decided to go more for for volume. So I'm I'm like I roast for big bigger cafeterias and you sell wholesale and i sell wholesale oh. um, no brand they put their brand as if it was theirs wow but what i do is that i go with the their expert the owners the whatever you want to call them we get in a meeting we do a coffee uh circle tasting and uh, and i designed a blend and a roast for them and then where do you produce this uh, seems, I do it in Bucerias. Because you're doing it in volume, so it seems like yep. a, a lot, a big operation that it you is. have going on. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I do it in Bucerias, and I have a satellite in uh, Ixtapa. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And you started this yourself from nothing when you guys came mm -hmm. here six years ago. And you were doing it, uh, you know, when you were, where were you originally? You were in Monterey. Monterey. Yeah, mm -hmm. you were doing it in yeah. Monterey. Yeah, but I have, like, there's some great businesses that, that, uh, that I know they care about their customers, so I approach them, and uh, and and I do a co coffee consultation for them, and they were in. As soon as they try the, the the coffee, they're like, "Okay, I want to make business with you." Well, that makes two of us, and, <laughs> uh, and 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 we did it. So mm -hmm. every customer I have has a unique roast for them that will not be given to anybody else. Wow! You custom my, make it for yeah. client. That's incredible. But now that my that 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 uh, the coffee business has grown so much, um, I think I'm ready to go back into having bringing back my make. Yeah. Again, my brand. Sorry. Um, and uh, and soon I'm gonna. I'm gonna oh, throw it good. Out there well, yeah. I guess we'll stay posted for that. <laughs> In the meantime, if you're a business owner and you want a custom co co uh, coffee yep. blend in, um, that you want to sell in your store, then somebody could uh, reach out to you directly, right? Yes. And I also give um, um, training. Oh, wow. Yep. So, and That's so, included in the coffee. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so how can people find out more about you know, your coffee, you're singing. Mm -hmm. uh, where can they find you if they want to reach out and talk to you? Is there a way that you know that, that they can do that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I have WhatsApp, so they can write at uh, my WhatsApp number is three two two. Oh, in English. <laughs> three oh nine. You can three... say it in Spanish. We'll just okay. throw it at the bottom there. Okay. <laughs> uh, tres veintidós tres cero nueve 
323-309-2315. So 322-309-2315. And um, for, for singing, you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook, and it's at singing the classics all one word and then you can see some of our videos and always reach out through message and okay and we're going to be in uh, teatro uno mas in nueva vallarta yeah in the in the coming season in november but also in encanto, and encanto this theater. summer we're going to be doing some concerts and things there oh wow so keep an eye out <laughs> and is that you're going to post about that on your instagram yeah okay yeah, yeah. dan is making a play right now oh yeah <laughs> I am. I'm actually very excited about it. This will be fun. So it's called My Fair Gringa. And, oh. and from musical theater level lovers, uh, My Fair Lady is a popular musical. And it's basically a, a spin off of that musical where I am the foreigner moving to Mexico. <laughs> Javier is my guide. And the funny things that we find challenging when we move here, we put into the the musical so you know having spicy candy <laughs> just different things that you're like what's happening um you know to make jokes and we've changed some of the lyrics of the songs it's and... a work in progress oh cool so guy. when when is this going to come that'll out that'll be or... coming out in the fall so for the and right it's now totally it's original you've written yeah. the whole thing oh cool. yeah so we're basing it we're taking some numbers from different musicals changing the words making our own thing from it but yeah you know just doing a play yeah. On, on that. that'll be a lot of fun i'm excited about that one. yeah that's <laughs> awesome so yeah your your guys's story is really inspirational uh and you know i don't even know if uh you know we talked about you where you live you live in bucerias just outside of bucerias okay yeah. and you do you own a house there yep. yes so <laughs> it was a bit of an adventure we bought some land and we had a plan to buy all the materials needed to build the entire home and then everything kind of went awry a few years ago um, due, due to a global pandemic <laughs> no big deal somewhat, yeah. <laughs> and so um basically we were able to build half our house um sort of so it's in livable condition but we're kind of glamorously camping we love it we're happy <laughs> the kids are happy um when we were able to like build it all the material and everything went up. Oh, like the five cost times. is high and right times, now. Yeah, just, so I'm yeah. like, okay, we can do about half the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. So it's a work in progress, but it's ours. It. We love it, and eventually it will come together. <laughs> yeah, I think if there is, if you, if it wasn't working for you, there would be an urgency in completing it, right? And it would yeah. be a top priority. But clearly, it is working for you. Yeah. And your kids. Yeah. You know, and, and it's okay. funny what kids really value. But I remember, you know, when my street was like under construction, and I was a kid, it was the best. Year. It was a full year. And of course, I'm sure it was a nightmare for the adults, you know, mm -hmm. nowhere to park, you know, pass like no, no, no passing through nothing, you know, and, um, and for us kids, it was the best time of our lives. Okay. I'll never forget it. There were tunnels, you know, everything. It was just yeah. so fun, you know? And so it's just mm -hmm. the, it, it, taking that perspective of when you're a kid, you know, you know, you value things a little bit differently. And so yeah. if your kids are, mm -hmm. are happy and, you know, then that's, and for like, us, that's amazing. Like where we are too is, is right now we're kind of alone. So it's just beautifully peaceful, full of gorgeous countryside oh, yeah. it's beautiful. and nobody else has started building around us i assume for the same reasons why we couldn't finish our house you know that it's just not quite the right time for them yet to yeah. with everything that happened so it's you know it, it's just an amazing place to be right now and um we'll just again ride the wave as it goes and go with the flow yeah that's amazing yeah and you know you have the land so that's mm -hmm. you know it's, it's yours and you know you can go at your leisure right yeah yeah. So also, what about, uh, you know, your kids? Where do they go to school? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they're seven and 10. Uh, how, how do you feel about, you know, sending them to school here in Puerto Vallarta? There are a lot of options. Admittedly, we did try a few different things um, because we're not conventional education people. So we were looking for things that were alternative schooling options. And we definitely wanted to help them learn Spanish when we first arrived so that they would gain more confidence that now that we're living in Mexico. Um, but over time, we have now settled with uh, Liberty Education Community School, which is actually focusing more on the English language. And then they have Spanish classes as well and some subjects in Spanish. So they're getting that balance. It's a mix of locals and foreigners. And um, it's we're based in theater there right now. Yeah, we're helping them with theater That's right so now. Cool. They, they involve the families and um, it's based on a Finnish education system, which we really 
appreciate just building that intrinsic motivation for our kids to love learning, to develop more of who they are and their creativity in the world so that they can really stand for themselves and, and think and think. Wow, <laughs> no, that's yeah. amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Kids are happy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all happy. We and like we're they have a lot of like friends socially. They've adapted well. Yeah, and they're in soccer. Like our oldest is crazy about soccer and he has some good friends there. And, and of course, that's more Spanish. Our youngest is about to start some Taekwondo. So we're just navigating. Yeah, he's, he's learning some colloquial Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but I mean, we, we've got it. We've got a good. Surprising folks. Don't say that. <laughs> it's good that you're a native speaker because I feel like they can really take advantage when you're not. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, they can't get. They can't. There's speak nobody to back. correct them at home. You know, and they're just, yeah. yeah. They don't know what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we're really happy with the community that we found and the schools that we found. Um, it's really wonderful. There's a lot of of great people. Oh, amazing. That's, I think that's great to hear about. I, you know, I, I completely agree. And that's, you know, why I love these, this, you know, these interviews and learning other people's stories just to kind of get that perspective of mm -hmm. how people are settling in and, and how they feel about living here. You know, to me, it's like the perfect medium. It's not, you know, uh, it, it's not a huge city. It's not a ton of rules and restrictions like, you know, the States and, and Canada. Uh, but it, you know, I lived in Nicaragua for 10 years before moving here. And that was almost, you know, not enough rules and restrictions, you know, not, a, not, a, <laughs> not, 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 there weren't even very many places to go shopping or do things like that. And I just find here is, is a great medium. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. not big city people either. So this, where we are is just a really lovely size and really lovely community has a great feel to it, has enough of what we need, you know, to mm -hmm. get what we need in life. Our family's tight. Yeah. The four of us are tight. We like hanging out together. I'm sure that will change as our kids age, but for Probably. now. <laughs> we'll we see. Are. You know, if it keeps the, uh, your kids close when they're in their adolescence and teenage years, then that's a, a secret we, you know, must uh, <laughs> figure <laughs> out. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, you know, just about done. But I just wanted to ask you guys two questions mm -hmm. that I always ask everybody at the end of the interviews. So one would be what you miss the most about back home. Mm -hmm. So I know you were, you said you were in Canada for 25 years. Yeah. So my, yeah. My most important years were in Canada. <laughs> at least adult. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I, what do you miss the most about there? Well, well I don't Canada. Know. I can go. Um, no. The thing that I miss most are the people, like, you know, the relationships that I built, the friendships, we still keep in touch. There's Facebook, there's all those things, but some of the play dates, being a new mom with some of the moms, um, you know, just being able to see fam some of the family and friends that are over there. My parents are still in Canada. My sister is there. My brother is in the States nearby. So um, we haven't had the freedom to visit as frequently. How often do you visit? Well, <laughs> I mean, the pandemic question. changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, we're going next summer. It's oh, been a while. It's been yeah. a few years. Yeah. But we're going next summer. And so, you know, that is one of the challenges, I think, is the people. I mean, they're... You know, you can find pierogies here, but like things like pierogies <laughs> or like getting a protein, right? Like some things that I, I grew up kind of taking for granted. You only see them once in a while, like people selling them, but I don't see them that often. Yeah. It's funny. I was just talking about that the other day with my <laughs> husband. Like I, I lo used to love pierogies. Yeah, yeah, it's just like funny things. But now, you know, we have tamales and we have, we have yeah. other things. <laughs> and what about you, Javier? For me, I mean, I left some really great friends over there. I mean, always, you always miss friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the amount of walking that I did in Canada. Yeah, hiking. Yeah, like I hiking, just hiking and here, walking. But it's and... more dangerous. <laughs> and right now it's hot. <laughs> yeah. Even at like 6 a.m., like you're like. I do not miss so the snow. Hot. I will say, like, I will take this heat. I'm thankful for air conditioning. I now love winter. Perspectives change everything. I don't miss the snow. That's, that was my other question is what you miss the least. Yes. You would say the snow? The winters were just challenging. I did love how the houses were hot in the winter, whereas in Monterey, the winter was the worst winter I think I've ever experienced because inside your house was colder than outside, and that was just normal and common, and people were used to that, and I was not. For me, it was I the, was frozen. The amount, <laughs> the, the amount of rules. Like I, yeah. I... I yeah. The amount of rules and it's just, it's almost like the system is made for somebody not to get ahead. 
Sometimes it felt that way. It feels like Yeah, it does. It's impressive. I had Mm -hmm. a, like, I work in the energy sector in a very good job. Yeah. Very good. Like, six-figure salary. And uh, we're still not getting ahead. Yeah, you're using yeah. tax bracket. And then, I don't yeah, know. no, it's 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 yeah. really hard. You're like, how much money do I need, and how do I even get it? You know, and this is you know, yeah, we just, circumstances. Yeah, there were some challenges, and we were like, what are we? What's important to us? And so, like we said, you know, when yeah. we've talked to our kids about this, if you want us to have more, daddy can go away, but we don't we don't choose that. And they're like, no, we choose to be together as a family. And they're, yeah. they're understanding that this is what our family cares about. Yeah, yeah. Our, our oldest boy, like I. Yeah. He comes home and he says, like, you know, my friends this, my friends that, and all that. And I was like, well, we can, we can do that. I just, you're not going to be able to see me that much. Yeah. And uh, he's like, no, never mind. Never yeah. mind. Oh. And that is, and they're valuing those things too. Well, you're giving them that example. Yeah. There's time, there's time for everything. That that will come late. Right now is like they need, they, we need family right now. Time. Mm-hmm. Once they start to go with their friends and things like that, like nature will tell you, like, okay, you have more time for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I can get busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now we're exactly. just really trying to work yeah. on that balance. Yeah, I right, know. I know. Right and now, and I, everybody says it flies by. You know, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, you look back in hindsight and it was just a small section of your life. And even though now, if I mean, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of raising your children mm-hmm. seems yeah. like a, it, it is a big chunk of time, but yeah. you know, yeah, right generally now, it will like... end and you know, they will go <laughs> off and, and there's a point yeah. too, you can just, you can see them developing their characters and who they're becoming and who, who we want to help them become and what we value and hope to instill in them. And these are those important years. Yeah. And so we don't want to just give those up to chance either. I yeah. mean, they are, you know, they have, their own being and we can't make them into anything but we can just help nurture right? yeah yeah absolutely I'm loving it i work when they're in school yeah he's when they're done school. school i'm done work oh it's that's so early nice, yeah. that's nice yeah two o'clock yeah <laughs> the freedom for o'clock. us to be able to be a family and have the freedom to do errands and, yeah. and we wouldn't take have care that over there we just wouldn't have that flexibility yeah. and i love the chutzpah that i feel over here you're just you know if you need to do something to live your best life for the most part you're just able to figure out how to do that yeah and it is really lovely yeah that's amazing i feel inspired talking to you guys as well <laughs> thank you <laughs> like go hug my kids and yeah. spend time with them. <laughs> um thank you so much for joining us uh you know this has been a really great interview i don't know if there's anything you guys want to add no i mean it's been a pleasure thank you so much for having us and um Hopefully, you know, this is a relationship we can continue to, and we're thankful that we got to share our adventures with the world, and hopefully it helps somebody feel inspired, and we're happy to help if we can in any way. Yeah, that's a huge plus. I get to meet so many people and make new friends and everything doing yeah. these uh, interviews. So, yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, I'm going to watch them now, right, some more <laughs> interviews on the channel. <laughs> And thank you for joining us. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, so you can be up to date on future interviews. Bye. Bye.